Uh, Wander Franco with the Rays. We've kind of hit on it a little bit. You wrote an article about why it might be difficult for him to get back in the U S if you haven't read it about because of the immigration laws and visa laws and what he has been accused of not saying he did it is probably is frowned upon most of the time when you start crossing borders. Um, we had Jim, I'm not going to say Bowden, Jim Bowden on yesterday because, and he said, Trevor Bauer will never pitch again in the major leagues. Do you think that Wander Franco, and this is just your opinion from what you've read and what you learned that he, I'm not going to say ever again, but in 2024, because the Rays have lost glass now. They got rid of Ray, Rayleigh. They got rid of Kittredge. They're making moves to kind of shed payroll. But will Wander Franco play in 2024? And will he ever play again? And does this give the Rays a chance to void that contract and get their money back? All right. There's a lot there, AJ, obviously. And to answer your first question, I don't believe he will play in 2024. And I'll tell you why. Major League Baseball has a joint – domestic abuse policy, domestic violence policy. And it covers this kind of thing, sexual abuse of a minor, as well as a number of other offenses. Even if Franco is found not guilty in the Dominican Republic, even if he is not charged, Major League Baseball has the right under this joint domestic violence agreement to suspend him. We saw that with Bauer. Bauer was never charged with anything, never convicted of anything, but he was suspended. It turned out for 190 plus games. So even if Franco gets through the legal part of this unscathed, which I can't predict will happen one way or the other, by the time that is done, who knows when that will be? We probably are months away from resolution. At that point, then Major League Baseball gets involved more conduct its investigation because they really can't get going until the legal stuff is cleared. And then Major League Baseball will decide whether to suspend him or not. Now, maybe it's April by that time. Maybe it's May, June, July. I don't know. Maybe it's March. But I expect that he'll get a suspension of some kind. And I expect that ultimately 2024 is going to be in jeopardy. Now, the rest of the contract. As I wrote, if he is convicted of this kind of crime, sexual abuse of a minor. Under immigration law, I talked to two immigration attorneys, that would constitute a felony of the kind that you can bar a player for. Actually, it would bar him automatically from the country. When you are convicted of that kind of crime, that is it, you're out. So he would not come back, he would not be able to come back and at that point, the Rays would not need to void the contract. He would not be able to execute the contract, and they would not need to pay it. Now, if he is cleared, or even if he somehow pleads to a lesser charge, if he is able to come back, right, then the question of the contract becomes more interesting. And we've seen over the years from Lamar Hoyt to Denny Nagel to Francisco Rodriguez, Teams have tried to recoup guaranteed money from players who got arrested and did not succeed. Ultimately, there was either a settlement or they paid in full. There is not much precedent for voiding contracts. But at the same time, if Franco is suspended, if he doesn't play much in 2024, the Rays save that much. And the question then becomes, what happens to the rest? And I don't know the answer to that. We're not there yet. We're not even close to that point yet. Where that becomes an actual conversation. And Ken, I mean, as you wrote in the story, you know, if he did not come back, right, that's when the money gets forfeited. It would be $174 million of the 11 years, 182 guaranteed that he signed in November of 2021. I think sometimes people don't realize that when these contracts are signed by players like him, where I believe he was maybe a year ish, if that, into his big league career, um, most of that money gets paid later on in the contract, right? Right. So for the Rays, if this plays out that way, most of the contract it, it would be gone. That's right. And again, if he's convicted of what is known as an aggregated felony in immigration law, then he's not coming back to the United States, and then the contract is not getting paid out, period. But we'll have to see if that happens. And yes, as you said, Scott, the way these contracts are structured, for fans who might not know, when you sign a guy with basically no major league service, like Franco, 
at the time he signed his deal. They are paid basically in accordance with the structure that exists in baseball now. A certain amount for their zero to three years, maybe a little bit more than they would have gotten. A certain amount for their arbitration years, roughly comparable to what they would have gotten. And then free agent years are where they are the most expensive, where they get paid the most. It follows the same kind of tack in that respect. So yes, Franco is still owed 174 of the 182, and we'll see how this plays out for the Rays. It's not playing out well for them, at least in terms of a player that they invested in who is not going to be available to them. A guy who might have been a superstar in Major League Baseball, and now his entire career is in question.